These are hefty bronze three inch through holes with a big transducer. So we wanted to make sure we had clearance for everything. We checked out where exactly we should do it in the center line of the boat, how far back it should go, if it's gonna protrude so low that it's gonna get knocked off by something if you ground the boat. Luckily with lagoons, they have mini keels, so we don't have to worry about that. So the FLS 3D comes with two transducers, one on either side of the cat, or if you have a bigger monohull boat, one on each side of the monohull. We figured out where it goes. So we measured in here, we measured the center line, we measured back, we marked where we need to go on both sides. And now, and now it's just time to drill. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Are you ready to put holes in your boat? Yes. Are you sure? No. Nope. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> this is the warning from the back. Make sure you're learning from mistakes that you did last. Send me your letter when you're done. Evaluating what your short life has become. You should know. You should know. So it's kind of hard to show on video right now, but what we want to do is align this thing perfectly straight forward and aft with the water line of the boat. So right here with the black line. Uh, we're going to epoxy these in and then once it's all straight, then we'll fare it all and it'll look really nice. So yeah, it's looking good. Okay, first things first, let's get some epoxy mixed up. I'm using an epoxy called Clear Coat. It's a bit cheaper than West System, but still has a 5 to 1 ratio of resin to hardener, just like West, so it should do the job nicely. This is my personal opinion, but for these non-structural jobs, some of these cheaper epoxies are just fine. In this case, we're using Superbond laminate with slow hardener, as we're located around 12 degrees latitude in the beautiful island of Curaçao, and the ambient temperature is a balmy 83 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 28 degrees for all you Celsius lovers out there. Normally it's best to use a scale to measure out your epoxy perfectly and get the best bond, but this cup has little hash marks so I'm eyeballing it as best I can. The next step is to add a filler to thicken up the resin and add strength. This is milled fiber, and it's made by cutting glass fiber into lengths of 80 to 150 micrometers. It's effective in improving not only the strength, but also the surface condition and dimensional stability of the final filler. You really have to stir this stuff up as it tends to clump up in the shipping container. For my purposes here, I needed enough structural strength while still being able to work with it, so it's pretty runny after adding the milled fiber. What you don't want is to add so much milled fiber that it becomes impossible to work with like this. It's easy to go overboard with this stuff, so add sparingly. Next up, I'm gonna add some fumed silica. This thickening agent is produced by vaporizing silicone tetrachloride in a hot flame. And it's used in many applications, from concrete to toothpaste. Yep, you heard that right. You've probably brushed your teeth with this stuff. Fumed silica is also known as amorphous silica. This means that the internal structure is closer to glass, which has almost no crystalline structure, than to regular silica, which has a well-defined crystalline structure. This is why we added a bit of milled fibers to give the final filler a bit of structure to flex with the boat. Ultimately, the final product should be something of a paste or peanut butter-like substance that's easily moldable but stays in place. We've decided to use a curtain rod to hold this through hole in place and keep it level while the epoxy dries. It worked great. So that'll be the rough first step, and then 
we'll uh, come back in a couple hours before the amine blush sets in and really fair it out with a, with a nice fairing job. But I need to make it stick first and so I can get that pull out of the way and that piece of wood out of the way. So once that's set and not moving anywhere, we'll pull the wood out and then I can, I can put like a really nice fairing on it. The next step is going to take a lot more epoxy. And as it's going to be covering a larger surface area, more milled fiber is needed to give it the structure it needs to flex. One thing to keep in mind is this mixture is going to be very difficult to sand, so you'll thank yourself later by trying to be as precise as possible when you slap it onto the boat. Also, because of the glass fibers, sanding after this step is one of the more dangerous jobs on the entire boat. So make sure you wear your respirator, coveralls, and any other personal protective equipment you've got. Nobody likes glass fibers in their private parts. The trick to doing this correctly is to having the mixture perfectly thickened. This is one of those jobs that will get easier the more you do it. That's gonna look super good when it's done. It's gonna look like a pro job. So we're just gonna leave this job for today. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll uh, ferret and fill it and get it ready for paint and then, um, and then it'll be done. And you can just pop them in, be done, good to go. The last thing to do is to add a fairing coat to smooth out any imperfections and reduce drag in the water. For this, we're using yet another type of filler, West System 407. 407 is a low-density, micro-balloon-based fairing filler that is much easier to sand than silica. It isn't as strong, so it's only used as a thin outer coating. The higher the percentage of 407 in your epoxy mix, the easier it will be to fair. I'm adding just a bit of silica to thicken up this mixture and give it a little more strength as it's going to be underneath the waterline where the owner is going to be scraping all the marine growth off. Actually, to tell you the truth, on a boat like this, it probably won't be the owner, which is exactly why I'm adding the silica. Here I'm fairing the porthole. As you can see, I like to use these yellow plastic spreaders as they are flexible, reusable, and perfect for getting this filler spread out where you need it. As with the last step, the more precise you can be with the application, the less sanding you'll have to do later. And here's the starboard side. Here's one last little tip for you. Convince the owner of the boat that it's him that needs to sand before the job even starts. Then you can be as sloppy as you want. Who cares? Look at him go! Woohoo! I'm very happy with how that turned out. It looks real nice. Stand up job sanding, buddy. Yeah, once it gets painted, it's gonna look super pro. What is up my beautiful people? So this video is special because I'm actually flying out in two days to join my buddy Angelo, who you saw in the beginning of this video, the owner of the Lagoon 500, to sail through the ABC Islands and test out that forward-looking sonar. If you're interested in seeing this footage, which will be super fun, please go to patreon.com, sign up as a patron, and you'll get exclusive access to all the footage before I put it out on YouTube. Huge Zingaro thank you to all my patrons who supported all these videos over all these years. Next video coming out is the maiden freaking voyage. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for a week on a Lagoon 500. Stay tuned for sailing through the ABC. Stay tuned for the oyster sailing. Stay tuned for the name change ceremony. All good stuff coming up. Okay, peace. See you next time.